Hi, it's Scott Moyes here from Cabaret Systems in New Zealand. Today I'm going to show you how to sketch a simple 2D profile, revolve it around an axis, and then move into the camera environment and apply some toolpaths to turn up um, this, this particular component. And just to show you how simple and easy it can be. So it's going to be a complete end-to-end -end demo. So to start with here, create a 2D sketch. I'm going to make things easy for myself on a lathe the z-axis is the axis we be, will be rotating this profile around the whole lathe spins around the z-axis so to do that I need to be creating a sketch on the z-y plane or the z-x plane I'll start by drawing the profile off the origin here because I want to keep everything simple so um, everything's going to be um, revolved around this origin here so to start sketching away I actually want to um, kind of truncate this radius here so I'll just hit escape now and then type L and continue drawing the profile and I'll trim that up and clean it up in a second. Now I've got my profile completed you'll notice that the color has changed um, indicating that there's a, a profile that can be swept here if we want to. Um, that changes if I pull that line back so it doesn't overlap. Now I can I could just trim these off or I could snap them to endpoints. And now I can start dimensioning it. So pressing D, I can dimension back to the origin of the sketch and start typing in my values. So we'll go with 49 mils and that's moved the whole sketch over instead of trying to turn it inside out. This is 54.25. As you can see, as I go through and progress, dimension in and constraining this sketch up the lines have changed from blue to black so the black lines are fully constrained but at the moment the blue lines indicate that I'm able to slide this sketch backwards and forwards. so what I need to do here is tie down this edge this particular line to the origin I held down control and selected both objects at the same time and in doing so it's narrowed down which constraints I can use so in this case here I just want to use a coincident constraint and now my, all of the lines are black, I've got a fully constrained sketch. Let's stop the sketch and we'll go into the create drop down and select revolve. It's asking for the profile so we select that and switch to the axis and immediately the origin came up so we're helping ourselves by modeling this about the origin in the first place so I can just select the z-axis and immediately I've got my revolved body. So now I've modeled everything up, we'll just save it off. Um, I'll choose my project that I want it saved into. And then switch over to the cam environment and start setting up my job. So we work from the left to the right on the ribbon. So the first thing you want to do is create the setup on the setup tab. We want to choose what type of operation we're doing. So we're doing some turning. We've already got the origin is set nicely as it is. So we've got the Z axis along the axis of the part and the X and Y. That's fine by me. Um, so I don't actually need to change anything here. I, my body's already selected, so it's defining what I'm going to machine. And then switch to the stock. Here I want to use a fixed size tube so my stock diameter is going to be 134 so it's just slightly bigger than I mean it's the stock that I've got on the shelf ready to go this is 134 mils on the outside the inner diameter is 89 and we'll go with a length of well let's we'll call it 200 instead give us a bit more space on the back but you'll notice that that grew on both ends on the front and the back because the model position is set to center so we want to offset this from the front 
and we'll add one mils to the front. So we've got one mils to face off on the front, and then the rest of the stock's hanging out the back, being held in the um, the chuck jaws on the lathe. We need to round up to the zero nearest one millimeter. Now we've got the setup complete. We want to face off the front of the part, so we'll select turning face from the turning drop down menu, and we need to select a tool. So immediately it's filtered the tool library based on the type of operation I'm doing here. And because we're going to be machining down the back, I need a bit of extra clearance from the tool. So this this tool's not going to remove enough material for me. Um, I do want a right hand tool and this one should give me much better access and better material removal so I'll, I'll stick with that one there um, you can set the feeds and speeds in here but I'm just going to leave them as default for now and let's see what we get so I can see already that it's previewing what it's going to cut off and we'll just leave it do its thing so it's chopped off the it's just faced off the front of the part if we just do a quick simulation to verify that, uh, just turn on the stock and set it to material and metal. Okay, there we go. And that's it. So we can see that it's just faced off the part to the inside of the, the stock diameter. Right, so on to the next thing. Let's um, use the same tool. This time we're going to do some turning a turning profile. It's remember the tool. Um, I'm doing outside profiling, not inside profiling, and I want to allow grooving because I want it to drop down the back here. I don't need to do any kind of confinement. I'm happy with the defaults for my radiuses and my passes. Where it's going to do some roughing passes in here, um, and it's doing finishing passes as well. Well I don't actually want it to come along and do this finishing pass I want to let um, a, another toolpath do that later on so I'll turn off finishing passes here and leave the leads and links as they are and we'll see what we get. Alright so the tool's coming along let's just do another simulation here So it's roughed out the approximate shape. It's got quite close to the material. If we turn on transparency here, we can see it's actually coming up right up against as close as it can to uh, machining the part. So I think we actually need to leave a little bit of material. So let's come back and edit the profile. Stock to leave. Let's leave 0.2. So we change the radial, it automatically changes the axial and regenerate. So you can see here it's actually leaving on a little bit of stock now. What I would like though is to carry this toolpath back beyond this rear face so that I've got a, a clean turned face to start parting on later on. So let's do that. Because we've got two different containment boundaries I'm actually going to duplicate this edit the original and we'll turn on just so you can see really turn on turn off allow grooving and we'll see now that the tool doesn't drop down the back at all it's just continues past at the same height as this outer um, flange here so if we come back into the second one we just copied and edit that we now have the opportunity we'll leave allow grooving on but let's do some stuff with confinement so we only want to machine between that face there and this face here. And we want to go back off. We want to machine further beyond the back of the um, putt component here by 20 mil. Let's just generate that toolpath and see what we get. So now we've got a situation where the tools drop down because we've got a loud gro grooving turned on in behind the part here. Well, we don't really want to do that because then when we're coming in and parting, the tool's going to try and deflect on this chamfer that gets left behind. So now we can review how we can contain the toolpath using the radius tab. So the inner, inner radius option down here, we can change that to selection and just choose this top edge and accept that. So now the toolpath won't go and break through that inner radius and you can see that it's keeping everything nice and flat. So I'm pretty, pretty happy there with those toolpaths. I've now got everything taken care of nicely. 
um, we'll notice here that we're actually doing a bit of remachining down, down the front of this part here. So let's go back and have another look at this. What we need to do is turn on rest machining from previous operations and now it can see that the facing operation has actually removed the material off the front of the part. Now we need to do some grooving. So turning grooving, we're going to be grooving on the outside. And just select a standard square grooving tool. And we're definitely going to turn on rest machining and let's see what we get. So what it's done here is it's gone and found the material that's been left behind by the previous two profiling operations, which is perfect, it's exactly what we want. But it would be nice if, let's simulate this a second, it would be nice if the tool came past that end slightly, and on the front side here, if it started a bit closer to the front of the part. So let's see what we can do about that. Again, we can use confinement. Okay, so front side stock offset. Let's just we'll try and get that to go five mil. And it's not because rest machine is turned on. It's not going to go as far as it needs to. And let's try three mils on the back and see what we get. So now we can see the tools coming quite quite a way past that. Simulate this and have a look. Now we've still got the flat of the tool in contact with the actual model. So that's perfect. Happy with that. Then on the front side, there's enough overhang. Yep, it's all good. So that tool is now completely finishing the entire part all the way along the profile. So let's simulate the whole job and see what we get. I'm going to turn off transparency here and play that and speed it up. And we can actually turn off the model so that we only get left with the the stock so profiling everything out working our way down to the finished surface and then we'll switch over to the grooving let's just turn off those tool paths so we can have a good look you can see that there's a you know the edge of the of the fillet ra the radius on the um, grooving tool has, has left these little fillets in the corner which is fine and yeah so it's all looking pretty good so we've still got stock left down the inside here which we need to clean up and in the bore and then we also need to part off this particular component so let's take care of that we'll turn back on our model now let's start doing some boring so we're going to be turning profile again but this time we're going to choose inside profiling and now it's filtered to turn the turning boring tools that are available and if we select that, you can see that the, the insert's facing the wrong way around. So let's go back in and select this again and just edit this tool. Now normally you'd have all your tools set up, right? But I don't in this case, so I'm just going to edit the tool that's, that I've got at hand. Okay, and now we can see that the tool's sitting in the right orientation for boring. And let's go, let's just see what it gives us. Right, so again, we've got all this, these additional toolpaths up here that we don't need. So we'll just edit that again and turn on rest machining. And we want it to go past the back as well a little bit. So we'll turn on some confinement and we'll do the same. Well, let's only go 10 mil. All right, and it's just coming up and starting to work its way up into this stock up here. We don't really need it to do that. So let's turn again to our radiuses this time the inner tool part the inner one we can set um, we want to leave as it is this time we want to do the outer so the outer we need want to switch that over to selection and we'll just select that edge there okay all right finally now we can part off the job turning part it's automatically found the back and it's not gone all the way to the center and we're done. We're away and laughing. So let's just simulate that as a final check and speed all the way through it. And that's it. One part turned based off the model that we've designed. And now we can simply come in here with the um, setup selected. 
and post out post out our code to our machine. So we can choose let's go or we'll use the the, the Haas DSS the SSY post, post that out and have a look at the resulting code. And there we have it. All of our G code for all of the turning operations we just did. Now here's the cool bit, because we're using integrated CAD and CAM, we can go back to the model and edit that base sketch and change any one of these values and have the um, toolpaths update. So let's just make it a little bit longer. So we'll go with 75 and let's increase the diameter of this a tiny bit. We'll go to 63. Yeah, let's see, see what happens. That'll do pretty subtle change um, we, because we've increased the length of it we should still have enough stock so we we'll switch back to the cam environment you can see this is all invalidated um, everything else is still okay let's just add a little bit more stock on the back here again 20 um, and all we have to do now is right click on here and generate all those toolpaths and the whole lot just updates And there we have it. So pretty straightforward. I didn't have to re toolpath anything. Not one thing. Every single toolpath just updated to reflect the changes in the geometry. And that is the power of integrated CAD and CAM. As a final point, um, we can then create setup sheets if we wanted to. So that the guy at the machine knows which tools that he needs to use get the job done all right so hopefully that was helpful for you guys and um, cheers for watching I'll see you again next time take care goodbye